Good morning, folks. We're going to be talking about an earthquake, weather, and some top science news today, but we are starting, as always, with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. Taking a look at the last 24 hours on our star reveals no solar flaring, no bright flashes, no ejections either of the small plasma filaments. Taking a look at the X-ray flux, we can see it has indeed flatlined, and that is due to the fact that there are no sunspots on the disk. We are zooming in on those bright umbral magnetic fields incoming here. They will be bringing sunspots with them, but not yet. Taking a look at the solar wind, we do see a good deal of stability as we had a peak in solar wind speed about a day and a half ago, and density has continued to drop. That leaves geomagnetism very quiet. It does not appear we have any more coronal hole streams on the way imminently. Next one should be a northern system, and it's coming just behind the bright active region and coming on the left. A large earthquake hit the ocean north of New Zealand yesterday. It was out there, deep enough that nobody felt it, and so even though readings came in well over 6.0, going to go down in the books as a 5.9. Looking at the weather over the last day with long wave signatures, we're going to be focusing on how a relatively clear day was struck by an explosion of clouds and precipitation around sunset. I'm going to go ahead and add the lightning shots in there so we can see how gorgeous of a display followed such a calm and seemingly quiet afternoon. The top weather story of the last day came to Japan. Dozens are dead, hundreds injured, hundreds missing, and over two million people evacuating as floodwaters are creeping higher. Interesting story here about dust that is supposed to be very rare and one of the hallmarks of the Milky Way, and how it was just discovered about as far away as we could ever hope to see it, not what they were expecting. Interesting article detailing and confirming the ENSO effect on monsoons in Asia, we know from previous works that solar forcing of ENSO has its biggest impact on the monsoon coupling, and if we get a grand solar minimum, it should be forcing an earlier arrival, less rain, and too early of a departure for the Malaysian monsoon. Lastly, folks, something that should hit many of your ears very well, it is statistically proven that exposure to the outdoors makes you healthier. It is a good read, and I'll further suggest finding a place to kick off your insulating shoes and socks, get some earth currents in you as well. Website members, if you head over to your Deeper Look section today, you've got a new one on a strange but likely explainable cloud anomaly. Of course, yesterday was Saturday, so your Fly on the Wall podcast is posted as well. Lots of good topics, including the Grand Cosmic Ray Maximum. We've got wind maps and shots of our start at close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.